Hello, this is Coach Jesse Kropelnicki with QT2 Systems here today to run through swim mechanics with you using some of the pros and elite athletes that I've worked with over the last several years as examples. The first one I'm going to run through here is Didi Griesbauer. Didi has a deep collegiate swim background. He's arguably one of the best uh, swimmers in the Ironman and 70.3 circuit currently. She re recently was first out of the water at Oceanside 70.3. So with that, we're going to start with the right side of Dee Dee's stroke and walk through some of the great examples of her good swim mechanics. So here on the right side, you'll notice she enters the water about midway between the top of her head and full extension. That's typically where I like to see swimmers entering the water. After that entry, they then extend and it creates a nice space for the remainder of the body to rotate into. So that's the purpose of that. As she progresses through her stroke, you'll see at full extension that pause there or that glide is very, very brief. And what she does is she starts to crack the wrist and get those fingertips down. And that's what typically initiates a higher elbow and a nice solid catch. It also tends to improve the turnover rate for the swimmer. Having a fast turnover in the open water is a very, very important characteristic and many times separates pool-born swimmers from the solid open water swimmers. Having that faster turnover allows you to get to the next propulsive phase of your swim stroke much, much faster. Conversely, if I'm gliding out front here with a long glide and a delay at the end of my extension, while I'm doing that in open water, particularly a rough open water swim, that rough water really kills the momentum. The chop slows you down, and then you have to re-accelerate yourself for the next propulsive phase of your stroke. So that's one major difference here between pool swimming and open water swimming is having that real solid turnover. Many collegiate-born swimmers are able to have that nice, graceful, long glide out in the front of their stroke because they're used to swimming in very calm water. So one thing that Didi and I have worked on quite a bit over the last couple of years is improving her turnover and having really no delay at the front end of the stroke, getting those fingertips down early in the stroke to try to create a nice high elbow. And you'll see Didi's catch here in this position um, has started to develop quite, quite nicely actually. And uh, one thing we're trying to do is continue to improve that higher elbow. So in an ideal world, we would have an elbow that looked uh, something like this or a catch position that looks something like this. And a solid catch position like that is critical because it allows us to get the palm perpendicular to the body earlier in the stroke, meaning we have a nice solid catch that grabs the water as we engage our lats and start to have rotation at the shoulder. We're in a nice propulsive position. So if I look at uh, the direction in which we're pr applying propulsion in this case, it would look something like this. Um, conversely, if I don't have that nice high elbow and I have a dropped or straight arm or neutral elbow, uh, it may look something like this. And then when I engage my lats and begin rotation at the shoulder, I'm actually pushing down on the water. When I push down on the water, not only am I not getting propulsion, but I'm also pushing the upper body up and lower body down, uh, potentially presenting balance issues. When you have balance issues like that, it does present a lot more frontal area to the water. So not only are you not getting forward propulsion, but you're also increasing the resistance. That's why that high elbow concept is just so important. And you can see here, Didi's a great example of having a, a higher elbow and a nice solid catch. Her mid pull position looks very good. One thing I wanna point out with Didi that's very, very good is the back end of her stroke. And this is another one of those characteristics that's very important for triathletes and open water swimmers in general. When we think about what we're doing in a triathlon swim, particularly very crowded triathlons, it's the front end of our stroke that's the first phase of the stroke that's lost. So if you're a swimmer that really focuses on the front end of your stroke to get some of your propulsion, uh, you're sort of out of luck because maybe sometimes half of the swim you're spent hitting the feet in front of you and losing that front end of your stroke. So that's why it's always important to have a very strong back end to the stroke for triathlon and open water swimming. That portion of your stroke is almost always protected. So it's something you can rely on and have all the way through the swim, even when it is very crowded. So to have that strong back end, you'll notice Dee Dee actually cracks her wrist at the back end of the stroke. And that's, that's a key characteristic there. And very few swimmers do this properly, but you'll notice she actually starts to crack her wrist in an effort to keep that palm perpendicular to the body and finish out the back end of the stroke. So um, when I talk about the palm being perpendicular to the body, we can see on the front end of the stroke, striking that high elbow allows you to get that palm perpendicular to the body and then cracking the wrist at the back end of the stroke 
allows you to keep it perpendicular to the body. That all is in an effort to improve the length of the propulsive zone. So the swimmers that have a longer propulsive zone are typically the faster swimmers. So anything you can do to improve that propulsive zone will only help. So again, the key characteristic here on the back end is to crack that wrist, and you can see how Didi does that very effectively. Versus some swimmers never really finishing out the back end of their stroke, and they sort of end the stroke prematurely to get to the next front end without ever finishing out the back end of the stroke, okay? So next thing I'm gonna do is take a look at Didi's kick. Didi relies heavily on her kick. She's got a very, very strong kick. One thing we've tried to do over the last several years is not rely on that kick as much. Uh, through some of the things I've already discussed from a mechanics standpoint on the front end, but also improving her strength. So anyhow, I do want to take a look at the back end here and, and, and focus on her kick for a minute because it is a great example of a solid, solid kick. The best way to do this is to just let the video play. You notice here on the right side, she gets that nice solid snap. And next on the left side, that solid snap. So that's what creates a really, really good propulsive phase there coming from the kick itself. So this kick actually originates at the hips, then radiates down to the knees, and finally out the toes. And that's what a that's what a really effective kick should look like, almost like a whip. Okay, and this requires quite a bit of anterior ankle flexibility. You'll notice her ankles are very flexible, and that's sort of required to have that whipping action continue all the way through the end and really, really create that propulsion. I wanted to also show some examples of some uh, poor or flawed swim mechanics. Uh, this particular example uh, is a, a pro triathlete actually that I've worked with uh, for quite a while now. And uh, he's got a very, very interesting swim stroke. Uh, the primary thing I want to point out here um, is his major, major crossover. And this is about as bad as it gets. So ideally everything from this angle should be totally aligned with the shoulder. Um, ideally, I like to see the pole be in a location that looks something like this. Um, you can see in this case, uh, he's extremely crossed over. And uh, again, ideally, you know, I don't like to see the palm be inside of this line, so it'd be much better to have that palm outside here. Just allows you to be a much stronger, uh, reduces the likelihood for injury of the shoulder, um, and just creates a better paddle in which to grab the water uh, and engage the lats for a nice solid pull. Um, so this is one example of, uh, of a major crossover. Here's another example with one of the top age groupers uh, that I work with. Uh, this particular fellow recently uh, went 926 in Kona. Uh, he's a very, very good swimmer. Uh, he's still got quite a few things within his swim stroke, though, that we're trying to work on. But uh, I really like this video as an example because it shows um, examples of some really good things, but also some pretty poor things and some of the fairly common uh, items or issues that age groupers have in, in triathlon swimming. So right away on the front side here, uh, you'll notice how front quadrant he is. Uh, the right arm uh, tends to stay at full extension in sort of a glide phase, allowing the left hand to catch up and you can see here that uh, both arms here are in the front quadrant uh, for a good open water swimming to allow uh, athletes to maintain momentum in a rough open water swim I like to see uh, the right arm in this case as an example in this position just leaving the front quadrant as the left arm is entering the water that allows us to be in very continuous propulsive phases um, versus being caught with both arms in the front quadrant here, uh, just sort of gliding. So that's not uh, a very fast uh, swim mechanics uh, posture to be in in this particular case. Okay, so that's one thing I don't like. Is this is very front quadrant swimming. Um, you'll notice that as the right arm enters the water here, it has this long glide phase and then bends up. So that's what it's allowing that left side to be catching up. See, in an ideal world, uh, this arm would have already started to um, get into a, a catch position and uh, very soon after that into uh, a propulsive phase of the swim stroke, the pull. Um, so that's that's the delay we're talking about here that, that causes us trouble. Um, but in addition to causing that delay in getting to the next propulsive phase of the stroke, um, with the bend up of the arm, it actually presents some frontal area to the water that isn't really necessary 
uh, here. And you can see that arm even scoops up and, and hits the surface of the water there, uh, grabbing some air bubbles. So that's fairly common in triathlete uh, swimmers for some reason. I think they've worked on uh, a long glide phase many times and uh, they end up with this upward bow. And again, that just presents a lot of frontal area to the water and decreases propulsion since we could have got to the next propulsive phase faster. And again, that is just so important for rough open water swims. Here's one last example uh, of another top age grouper uh, that I work with. Uh, this particular woman swims under one hour uh, in Ironman. So again, she's a very good swimmer. Uh, but still some items or issues in here that we are currently working on. As a matter of fact, this footage is a, a little bit older and I think we've si since fixed uh, some of the items that you'll see in this video. I wanted to use the above water footage in this particular case to show the effect of a straight arm entry. And uh, I don't get particularly concerned with straight arm entries or what people do with their recoveries, except when it really starts to impact uh, their entry to the water, their extension or ability to get into a good posture for uh, the pull phase of the stroke. So in this case, you'll notice the shoulder actually enters the water first, uh, then the elbow and then the hand. And what that does is it creates a tremendous amount of resistance at the front end of the stroke. And you can see it there by the splash. So the, the shoulder's in at that point on the right side, and then the rest of the arm just sort of rolls into the water. Um, this isn't super common with swimmers, but uh, when I do see it, it does have an impact. It typically um, can mess up some of the stroke timing, but it also applies that great amount of resistance on the front end of the stroke as the arm rolls into the water. Um, so again, this is um, something that isn't super common, but when you do see it pop up, it does have a major effect. And uh, I'm just going to let the, the video play here so everyone can take a look at that. And uh, her ability to swim very, very uh, well under an hour in Ironman, as I stated, is mostly a function of her great catch. She has a very, very good catch uh, from an underwater uh, point of view, which sort of compensates for this uh, poorer entry. So um, as we fix the entry with her, uh, I'm sure we'll see her sometimes improve dramatically. So I appreciate everyone's attention on the video. And uh, again, this is Coach Jesse Kropelnicki with QT2 Systems.